This is Robert Kraft, and I'm your host on SNN Network. And joining me right now is Chris Dobbin. He is the president and CEO of Nova Leap Health Corp. It's a publicly traded company. I got two symbols for you, NLH on the TSX Venture and NVLPF in the U.S. Chris, this is two times in two weeks, man. You must be doing something wrong that you got to see me, you know, twice <laughs> in a week. So I, I, I'm going to start off by apologizing right there, man. How you doing? Uh, it's good to see you again. That's a, never, never too much to see. I'm happy to join. Ah, uh, I appreciate that, man. Thank you. So uh, we actually last had you on uh, on the show here back in mid. Well, I published that interview back in mid May. So uh, let's start off with a very quick update. You know, what 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 are some developments going on in the company since then? Yeah, I suppose since we last chatted, uh, uh, and you posted mid May, so we would have had uh, probably th three things. One is uh, we announced our Q two results. Uh, so I'm, you know, certainly happy to talk about those. And number two, um, we've made uh, two announcements for for acquisitions. One's in New England, uh, which is going through the licensing process right now, and the other was an Arkansas-based company, which we closed, I guess, be about uh, almost, almost two weeks ago now. Nice. All right. Very good. I mean, is is there? Do you want to elaborate on any of those new? You know, why why is why is some of these things important for the business moving forward? You know, how does this hit on some of the milestones that you you're looking to achieve in 2020? Yeah. So if I go back to the comments I made at the end of Q2, uh, what I'd indicated was that really towards the end of Q1, we'd start to see see a little bit of pressure on the business as a result of COVID. That continued on, I'd say into April and May, uh, and we were very much internally focused as an organization during that period of time. Uh, towards towards end of May into June, uh, we started to see a real turnaround in the business. Um, and I had indicated in my comments in Q2 that uh, many of our businesses were, ba were back to pre-COVID levels by the end of Q2. And, and I think as we started to move from the internal focus on, on the impact of COVID back to external uh, and M&A opportunities, what we really saw was uh, an influx of, of, of m and opportunities. And I'd say this has probably been the more, one of the more active times we've ever had since we started the business. Um, and you'll remember we did, I think, five acquisitions back in 2018. That was a pretty busy time for us early on in our, in our evolution. But this has been a very, very active time. And so we have a lot of opportunities in front of us. So I think just, you know, the message to the market was, look, we, we were internally focused. We've shifted back to external. There's m and opportunities in front of us. I'd say there's a lot in front of us. We've made two announcements, um, but we're still very much in growth mode and expect to make uh, further acquisitions as, as we go along here. So I have to ask, you know, because this was, we talked about the business strategy in our last interview, you know, but I, I thought I, I wanted to kind of take it a step further in, in today. You know, um, we, we've seen this roll up strategy. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's a, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough strategy to do sometimes. And some, and, and not every industry uh, it makes sense for. So I wanted to get some more color from you as to why the mom and pop home healthcare services industry is an opportunity that, that you wanted to focus on. Yeah, I mean, certainly from an industry perspective, it, it you know, had to do with my family experience where we, we, we saw firsthand the right, benefit that home care has on families. So that's, that's paramount to me. So we, we understand it. We know the impact. And then we start looking at the broader industry. It's very fragmented, right? So, so now we have an easy business to understand. I mean, we're providing one-on-one we're providing -on -one care within a home. Right. So pretty easy business to understand. We bill on an hourly basis. We pay our caregivers per, for every hour of service. Right. People people can get that. Um, we look at the fragmentation of the market and we're talking about thousands of opportunities that exist in Canada, the U.S. in the coming years. And it's based on demographics. Right. And, and I think everybody understands demographics. So easy business to understand, demographics, small mom and pop businesses is what we're after. And so from a risk profile, you know, we're not biting off too much we, more than we can chew. You know, matter of fact, we're, we're, we're adding these small businesses to a larger platform. And I think from a risk perspective, then that, that certainly makes sense, right? Um, we've demonstrated our ability to make some incremental improvements to these businesses. And so people can look at that and say, okay, you know, not only are you buying, um, you know, all these businesses, I think we've done what, 12, probably 12 in the last three years. I mean, that's, that's a lot of acquisitions in a fairly short period of time. And I think where you see um, companies not successful is when they, they fail to integrate properly, right? Or they spend right. a lot of capital and not getting a return on capital. Well, 
you know, I think we've demonstrated pretty good track record. So we look at, again, easy to understand business, small, small type of business we're adding to a larger platform, continuing to have good operational improvement and just a, a, a large opportunity in front of us in, in terms of the sheer volume um, of, of acquisition opportunities that exist in, in the yeah. coming years, as well as the demographic that's effectively pushing the demand for the service onto us. And I think we're, I think it, it makes for a fairly compelling, um, you know, investment opportunity, which is, which is why we started the company. You know, I, I also have to ask Chris, you know, what, what's the most difficult part about your job and don't say talking to investors, you know, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, the most difficult part of my job, um, number one, it's a great job to have because I'm, I'm fortunate to work with a lot of great people. And I think about the nature of the work they're performing. I mean, they're, they're exceptional, both in Canada and the US. So I, I think, um, you know, that that's the benefit that I have. I, al I always say that, you know, I'm meeting some great people, you know, you know matter, no matter where we go, even if we don't necessarily, you know, consummate a transaction, I've met, I've met some pretty interesting people. Um, you know, the, the challenge to our industry uh, is making sure that we always have caregivers, right, to perform, perform the service. So when I think about a, a bit of a barrier to growth, it's not the hours that are demanded from us from the market. It's making sure that we can match the proper caregiver up to the, to the families. And, and so, um, you know, that, that's a bit of the challenge that's presented within our particular industry. And so there, there's there's that constant, um, you know, work on, on that aspect of the business. Um, and, and so that's where you spend a little bit of time at the different agencies in, in terms of making sure that we're, we're always on top of the hiring process and the training process and so on. But, um, you know, I've got a bunch of great people I get to work with on a regular basis. And so I'm, uh, uh, you know, I'm pretty happy about that. Very good. So, and one other thing I wanted to address in this interview today is, you know, uh, in doing a little research on the home healthcare services space, you know, it, it, is it traditionally that there's, there's high turnover of caregivers or what, what, what's, what's that like? Cause I know it, it, I can imagine when you have your loved one there, you know, you want to have that consistent care uh, from the same person, you know, but I mean, how, how do you handle that, that, that happening? Yeah, when you think about the model, I mean, we're providing care in, in say a four hour block, right? Like a four hour shift right. or all the way to 24 seven care and then, and then everything in between. And so we're matching up caregivers with the families and that, that's based on, uh, you know, personalities, uh, the, the type of need that the family has. And again, we have 75% of our clients live with a form of dementia. So depending on how far along they are, um, and the circumstances, we, we need to make sure that we have the proper caregiver to provide that training. It is a high turnover business. That's the nature of the industry. It's always been that way. Um, everybody does everything as possible to provide training and set up programs and, you know, giving the amount of work that they need. But on the one hand, we have individuals that are looking for a certain amount of hours, right? And our job is to, is to try to give them the hours that looking for with the right family. And, and so the first 90 days, it's really that first three months you know, the, I guess the three month window that's most important in our industry as it comes to turnover. Um, and so the onboarding process, the training pro process, and again, matching them up with the, with the proper families and giving them the hours that they want to work, that, that's where um, things become pretty important within that, that first three months window. Very good. All right. So Final question, you know, uh, similar question I asked you back in May, you know, from what you can tell us, you know, what, what would you say are some value catalysts or even some tailwinds for the company now for the rest of this year going into 2021? Yeah, I, I think two things. One is if we look at the industry perspective, um, we do have tailwinds. Uh, now, look, we, we, the COVID is out there. And so I don't think anybody knows the impact that that's going to have. We saw some impact Q1 and Q2 very difficult for us to determine what, what the impact going forward. But I know the one thing is that I think, uh, you know, nursing homes and assisted living, I think are, are having a bit of a struggle in terms of either keeping people because they often get locked down as a result of COVID or, um, you know, maybe seniors delaying otherwise going into a facility because of COVID. Uh, and so, you know, where do they need the service? it has to be in a home, right? And, and that's, that's what we provide. So I think from an industry, I think the in-home care providers are in really good shape. So to me, I see that as a tailwind and I think that's gonna last for a few years. 
um, you know, in, in terms of catalysts, we're, we're an acquisitive type company. I mean, we've, we've made, again, I think it's 12, uh, I have to go back and check. I think it's 12 acquisitions over the last three years. Um, you know, we expect to make more acquisitions. I mean, that's, that's, uh, you know, I've referred to that in terms of the opportunities that I think are available thousands, I think in the coming years. And so I, I, my expectation as a guy running the business is that we're going to continue to, to grow as we have in the past. And, and, uh, you know, I'm certainly looking forward to that. Very good. Well, Chris, where can my audience go and find everything they need to know to follow along the Nova Leap story? NovaLeapHealth.com, I think is probably the best way to go. Uh, if people really want to get up to date news, probably best to sign up for our newsletter. Uh, anytime we have a press release, we send it out within a few minutes after that. So that's certainly the best way to keep on top of things for us. Very good. Well, Chris, thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. Good luck. Stay safe. And I look forward to our next update. All right. My pleasure. We'll see you in a few weeks. See ya. Take care.